jump on a couple of other planes to get himself here, but he made it. Uh, I gotta say, he came through with a big smile on his face, and he's lined up for the quarterfinals here as we turn our attention to quarterfinal number one. Kim Jung Won there, come out of retirement because of Tokyo 2020, goes up against the entertainer, Bollard Apathy. Miklos Kosa will be our referee as we look through the stats for the two right-handers. The world ranking doesn't mean too much at this stage, but what is in, what you've mentioned today in the earlier stages is they're both into their 30s. Most of the fences are in their mid-20s. These fences are 34 and 36. Quite experienced. So here we go. The first men's quarterfinal at the Montreal Grand Prix of 2020 is underway. And there is, it was a ripper of a riposte, as you would say. Uh, Kim was a bit lucky to get through here. He was up against number two, Dershowitz of the United States, and at 14-14, Dershowitz went for a parry, missed on the riposte, Kim scored on the remise, and here he is. Well, we're, we get a very slight uh, break here because uh, the uh, microphone wasn't connected up to Miklos Kosa, and also, the guys had the wrong remote control for the scoring apparatus. So we will watch that score pop up on the main screen. Attack going straight through for Apatee. So in the first two actions, Apatee with a rip of a riposte and a straight attack. What's next? A yellow card for Kim jong won going early in Sabre is a massive advantage. And the rule of thumb with the referees, the unwritten rule, is that when a fencer jumps the gun like that, you give them an unofficial yeah, yeah. warning. But the rules are clear that it should be a yellow card. Second phase of the attack from Kim jong won and he gets off the mark. It's an interesting story. The uh, Korean men's Sabre program recently dispensed for the services of their head coach. And so I'm told, Kim jong won has sort of stepped in as a team manager, uh, but he's also, uh, well, he's a player manager, isn't he? Because he's, he's here in the quarterfinals, and uh, he's got a very good chance. So Apathy then with the attack, Kim was floating forward but not attacking. Apathy saw the opening and, and scored. Again, on Kim's first step forward, Apathy quick off the mark and scored with a, a direct lunge attack. We're seeing the whole repertoire here from Apathy. There was just a, a head parry or a post. It's almost too easy for him right now. Kim had a pretty tough uh, battle through the round of 16, taking out the world number two, Eli Dershowitz, uh, coming uh, what well, he led at the halfway stage, Dershowitz fought all his way back into the fight and got into the lead, and then Kim stole it at the end, 15-14. Sometimes a big match like that can burn you out. No question, and the referee reversed the call here, by the way. Yeah, went to video, and it was a good call from Kim jong Won. Another parry repast from the Korean. Very late in the day, almost Aaron Zilagi-like with that parry. So when you say late in the day, you mean waiting till the very last moment? Yeah, until the point of the, 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 right the, the weapon is almost on the target. It's risky, but it worked. Pretty tight in the head-to-head -head between these two. Attack from the left by Apatee. Kim just edges that head-to-head, 57% to 43% in terms of victories, but tellingly, Apathy won their last match, which was at the Gio World Cup in 2017. Perhaps a bit too long ago to make a difference. And it's Apathy, though, that is leading the way at the halfway stage. We have a break in Sabre uh, when the first fencer reaches eight points. Jeff, you said the full repertoire. He's looking very strong, isn't he? Strong on the blade, strong up the attack, strong of the attack and preparation. He's very quick with his legs right now. And what's interesting with Apathy is that he does seem to be uh, a little bit more contained in himself. 
I don't, I don't want to say in his younger days, because he's a lot younger than me, that's for sure. But he, he was a jack in a box. He would spring out of it, hits out of it, left, right, and centre. But he seems to be a little bit more conservative. Do you think that's because he's containing the legs? May, it's possible. Maybe, maybe it's experience. He wants to use his energy wisely. Well, Kim Jong-un here now talking to uh, one of his teammates, in fact, there, uh, going through the routine. Uh, he's got some work to do at five down, but as we often say, Jeff, in Sabre, uh, you can score a rally of hits uh, to, to close a gap like this quite quickly. Right, the hits come in bunches, and the momentum could change after a couple of those hits. And what happens is in the break, you get coaching from your coach, you're going to change the strategy. I think the key for the person who's leading 8-3 is apathy. Don't change anything. Don't worry what Kim's going to do. Continue to do what you were doing that brought you to 8-3. Well, they've had their minute break. They've had a chance to talk to their coaches. Miklos Kosa gets us back underway. Apathy leading 8-3 at the break, but gives away the first hit. He tried attack in preparation there, but this time Kim started his arm first, and that's why he got the attack. And this time walks in looking for para pass Kim Jong-un. Second intention drew out the attack from Apathy off the line. Found the parry, and he's already closed the gap by two. Make that three. And just like that, out of the break, you worked so hard, did Apathy, to get to 8-3. And in three seconds, it's 8-6, and you're starting to second-guess yourself a little bit. That's four. Four actions, four touches, and we have a match again. You talk about this uh, logical, tactical circle that these fences are following there. Not only trying to make their actions vary from hit to hit, but they're also thinking, what's my opponent going to do now as well? And if you get into a run like Kim's on, sometimes it can really break things down. Apathy at the moment needs to take a deep breath and reset. And we talked about the full repertoire from Apathy. Now we're seeing a repertoire from Kim. We saw repose, we saw attack, five touches in a row. Talk, we just talked about the momentum's changing on a dime, and now all of a sudden, the pressure has gone from Kim back to Apathy a little bit. Steps in this time, pulls his arm right back, opens the door for Apathy, who gets his very first point of the second half of this match. So, Jeff, that one looked... It looked together. How's the referee called that? I mean, Kim's accepted that it was attack on preparation. Here's the replay. Attack from the left, in my opinion. And the last two actions, I thought after getting six in a row, Kim took a little mental break there, counterattacks. But there he brought it back, and it's 10-10. Well, there we see some of the, uh, the old character of Apathy running in, jumping up in the air. Didn't work out this time. He gets the momentum going. Kim thought he broke the time there, but he didn't. And you hear the referee say, toujours l'attaque, which means it's still the attack. And he was short there, and there was a little window for Kim to attack at that point, but he didn't. And Apathy retook the attack and got the action. Well, we've seen him contain his emotion all day today, Kim Jong-un, but that was a furious screech as he knew that he had the right of way and all he had to do was find the target. Apathy skipping away, now he has the momentum, but Kim goes over on that front ankle. That's the second time today he's done that, and this time it looks pretty bad. Uh, his compatriot comes out. Uh, I didn't see anything too innocuous there, but as he tried to change direction, Jeff, he, he looks like he's twisted that ankle. We might get a look at it now. It looks like he may be overextended on that lunge, and maybe it's the back in the uh, the back of the ankle. Achilles tendon. The he tendon is area. on the floor. He is absolutely in agony, and you don't often see fencers showing this much emotion. Uh, anyway, they try and contain themselves, but he is in trouble here. Only the ones that play soccer, football as well. Yeah, there's no diving in question here. This is definite, and you're quite right, he's grabbed the Achilles tendons, and he he's up on his feet, actually. That's uh, Bollard Apathy. Often difficult uh, not to think about the other fencer in uh, these 
situations because, of course, they have to contain themselves. They don't want to see their opponent injured or hurt by any means, but they also have to stay focused. You can see there that Kim is fully wobbling. Uh, Five-minute uh, medical timeout almost certain to be called here, but if you blow your Achilles tendon, there is pretty much nothing you can do. I think if, if he ripped the Achilles tendon, we would know it by now, but uh, they'll probably tape it up. And um, just so everyone knows, if you're new to fencing, is that if a fencer just doesn't get injured, you take a timeout. The medical personnel have to come up, uh, verify that it is an injury, and once they do, the clock starts for five minutes. If after the five minutes, the fencer is deemed un unable to continue, then the, the bout is forfeited. Oh, you're quite right. They called for uh, that, the, the magic tape. And he's, he is indicating to strap it up. But I wonder, actually, is sometimes, I don't know, when, when you fenced, a, uh, I experienced sometimes when the floor was hard or the, pe the piece was particularly hard, when you land a really sharp lunge, you can almost bruise your heel as you do it. Sometimes that can happen. I did see him grabbing the bottom of his heel. It seems though that the raised piece here has some give to it. There's a little bit of bounce. So I don't think that would be the case. Well, as you can see, that is the countdown clock there. Just uh, under two minutes left for Kim Jong-un to uh, return to the piece. He's... He doesn't look great. And what will happen here after he's taped up, he'll get on guard, he'll do some footwork to see if he can continue. And the fencers are almost always going to want to continue. They're, 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 they're warriors here, but and I, I presume that he will continue. Yeah, I think he will, no doubt. I think he'll continue even if he is injured. Now, that, that, that then begs the question, with Tokyo just a few months away, is it better perhaps to be a bit more conservative and... and, and take a top eight finish and, and withdraw. Well, he, he stood up then and he's walking. You can just see him coming down towards the piste. He's coming to thank uh, Apathy for, uh, what, is he conceding? Let's see. I think he's ex certainly explaining the injury. And he's, he, I think what he said there is, listen, I had a little twinge before I came into the competition. I've rolled over on it and I'm really sorry that I've caused a break in the fight at 11-11. Very gentlemanly, you have to say. So what's interesting about the fencers, they try so hard to beat the opponent. Uh, they're all going for the same prize, but there's a tremendous amount of camaraderie here uh, among the fencers. Well, I think they're going to dispense with that. 11-11, a place at the semi-finals at stake here, and Kim Jong-un, he doesn't look comfortable on his feet, but he gets a crucial 12th touch. He's limping, and if I'm Apathy, I would open the distance and use my legs to an advantage. Yep, he came clearly just going for everything in the middle. If, if uh, Apathy stands still, he's going after him, but I think you're right. This plays massively into Apathy if he can take things out of the middle. Two meetings of the blade. Ah, no. Referee calls it as a prize defer attack. Miklos Kosa is asked to go and have a look at the video. I think there's a second meeting of the blade there. It was did not get through initially. Apathy took the blade. There was clearly a second meeting of the blade. We heard it here. Click, click. And the referee is explaining that it landed on the guard. Prize defer was parried and the repose from the right. Tough call. Explanation given, hit stands for Kim. Kim stepped forward, he didn't start his attack, and that opened the door for Apathy, and now it's Kim that calls for a video review. I don't see this one changing. Let's take a look. Looks like attack from the right. You don't think so? No, nope, attack from the left. I now, think as he steps in that first step, the arm drops, and it, it, it isn't progressing forward until after the first step, whereas Apathy had already started, and he gets another one here, and one away. Kim, desperate to keep this in the middle. Apathy wanting to step in, lure him in, make him miss maybe this time. Attack from the right to tie it up at 14. And Apathy acknowledges, and Kim limps around in between actions, but when you're fencing, he's going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, the adrenaline kicks in, yeah. doesn't it? So. What a way to start the quarterfinals here. A match between Apathy and Kim at 14 apiece.
Now, is this parry a past for Apathy or does the attack go through? Kim is convinced it's his. Kosha at 14-14 must go to the video. He's had a look at it. He's coming back. And the call is... Wants him to have his mask on, come back to the line as we get another look at the review. And no hit is going to be given there. And no real complaint from either fencer either. Too difficult to call, too difficult to split. So 14 all, one point for a place in the semi-finals in Montreal. Both appealing again. Two different types of attack, but for me, both pausing at the beginning. It's a question of, does one of them start before the other one? Referee's back to make his decision. It's a tight one. And it's given as attack into preparation for Ballard Apathy. The Frenchman has gone through the first quarter final, 15-14. Jeff, what a way to start this final session. Unbelievable and great guts by Kim. It looked like he was severely injured and he put up a great battle right to the very last action. Well, if Olympic qualification is your thing, Bollard Apathy came into the competition leading the race for the, one of the two European spots. 